they are predicting rain for today. Well, if this is our rainy day, I'll take it. And it is early in the morning, we've got already 8 amps outside. Yeah, it is actually starting to get a bit chilly in the morning. Guys, welcome back to the Orchid Garage in sunny, but not hot Australia. All right, my friends. So in today's video, we want to fully charge the uh, partly this um, Google Tower of Power here. And the purpose of this test is to see how version 14, 15 and 19 are working together and fully charge this battery here. We want to take a dumb charger and this basically simulates a situation where we don't have any communication to your inverter. Yeah, this is basically the setup what I have here in my shelf. Yeah, these batteries are not reporting to the charger. There's no communication between these. And this is exactly what we want to simulate here as well. And I want to show you what is going to happen. We've got four batteries here, but we are only using the top three batteries because these bottom two batteries are identical. So, and this one is not fully, it's not as charged as the other three on top. So we leave the bottom one away. So top battery will be our master with the version 19 BMS. Middle battery will be slave number one with the version 14 BMS. The bottom battery will be slave number two with the version 15 BMS. But you can use any of the three, 14, 15, 19 as the master. So you don't need to have a version 19 to be the master. Version 14 works 100% exactly the same way. Uh, at least for now with these firmwares. Because as we know from the last video, Gcon has stopped providing updates for the version 14 and 15 of the JK Inverter BMS. Only version 19 here in the top battery will get further updates. 14 and 15 won't. But of course we can still use them and they work wonderfully, beautifully. Okay, let's start up the charger. It should be set to 55.2 volts. This is what we would usually set in an inverter which has no communication to the battery. 55.2 volts to fully charge the battery. Yeah, So the charger is not aware what is going on in these batteries here. Now let's turn on our solar and see what we get. All right, uh, let's have a look at the uh, Victron remote console. First of all, so we are on 80% state of charge. This is the average of all three batteries now combined reported to the um, inverter. And um, solar 37, 26 watts. What? Oh yeah, really? Yeah, there's some rain actually coming. This is not good. Oh yeah, we've got only six amps outside. No wonder. Uh, we are almost there, guys. 21 amps, go. All right, now we should see, uh, yes, 20.5 amps. So, and if we have a look here in the settings of the JK Inverter BMS, and we go to details, we should actually see, yeah, three batteries connected and online. And here we can see um, battery number two has the lowest cell voltage. There is cell number six. And sometimes it switches back to the master 00 cell number 16. Yeah, minimum cell temperature is in battery number one. So perfect how this all communicates and shows you the details here in the Victron system. And down here we can see we have an installed capacity of 874 ampere hours and 701 are available. Okay, this looks all good. And if we go down to parameters, we should see the 55.2 volts, maximum charge current limit and maximum discharge current limit minus 5%. That's what the JK BMS takes off. Okay, let's charge to 55.2 volts and see what's going on. So I have actually prepared something else here. Yes, here. So here we can see the three batteries. Yeah. Google Power 0, Google Power 1 and Google Power 2, I've called them. And I put all the details here on the screen so you know what's actually going on. You can see the state of charge of each battery, 75, 74 and 93, nice and mixed. And you can see the current going into each of these batteries at the moment. So they're all balanced. I clicked on it. They're all balanced out. So that's why the battery in the middle takes the most current at the moment. And once this one is catching up, the current then spreads into the other batteries as well and recharges them. 
So if you wonder, all these information are coming from the new PETA board. Um, this is an IBM S monitoring board and it connects actually to the internal RS485 port of the JK inverter BMSs and receives all the data from each single battery into Home Assistant. Um, on a website you can read the information if you don't have Home Assistant. I'll do more videos about all these new IBM S's now, all the upgraded Peter boards um, in the very near future. I'm still testing a little bit and we are developing the software still, but it is fantastic. And this is all the data you see here in Home Assistant. This is all coming from this one single board. It reads all the information of 16 connected uh, batteries, if you want to, down to the cell level. 54 volts, close to 54 volts, very close to 54 volts. So we've got a bit of time. Yeah, there's not much happening at the moment here. 40, 50 watts coming from the pool fan system. It is so cloudy now, not funny. Okay, let's give it a moment and I'll be back soon when it gets interesting. So I've also ensured that all the settings are the same in all three different BMSs here. We've got an RCV timer and an RFV timer of 0, of 0 0.1 hours, which is six minutes. This is just for testing purposes, of course. And I've set the RCV, the requested charge voltage, all the same. And also the state of charge 100% voltage. This is when the BMS actually resets to 100% after the absorption timer has run out. This is all the same in all three BMSs. I ensured that. So they actually should switch to 100% all at the same time, more or less. So we can now see the power supply has reached 55.2 volts. The current is already tapering off. The cells are now absorbing at this voltage, but um, the actual batteries are a bit lower in voltage because of all the voltage loss we have with these cables and crocodile connections and bus bar connections and other connections, of course. So this is just the charging voltage of the charger and the battery voltage is lower. And that's why it is also important to have a communication between your battery and your charger because the charger will now stop charging at 55.2 yeah but this is only what the charger measures internally not what's coming from the battery so and here we can see we are at 54.8 volts around in the batteries so this is um, 400 millivolt lower than the charger actually measures but we are getting close to 55 volts now so current is already tapering off Okay, we've got the. I put this over here. We've got the um, JK BMS here. This is the master BMS on the app. And we've just reached the 55.12 volts, and this is exactly what people or what some of you have set as the state of charge 100% voltage. Yeah, this is when the BMS resets to 100%, and we have reached this now. Yeah, 3.445 volts times 16 is exactly 55.12 volts. Then I'm getting emails and saying, well, it doesn't work. It doesn't reset to 100%. No, of course it doesn't. You need to wait for the timer to run out, but the timer has not even triggered yet. Yeah, we are still in bulk and the charge status timer has not even started. And this will only occur if you hit the requested charge voltage of 55.2 volts. Then the absorption timer starts. And only afterwards, if the voltage is still high or again high like this, it will reset. Because this is the only method to really determine if the battery is still on 100% state of charge. You could reach the 55.2 volts at some stage and then you plug in your electric vehicle or turn on the oven or something and you discharge the battery massively. And after the timer runs out, it resets to 100% while the battery is actually at 90% because you have used all this energy already, yeah? So that's why we check again after the timer has run if the voltage is still at 55.12 volts. And then if yes, we reset to 100%, because then we can say the battery is at 100% state of charge. So, and now I want to show you another reason why communication between your battery or your BMS and the inverter is so important, yeah? We've got here 55.1617 volts. But the inverter shows 55.2 and the current goes actually further down. We will see probably like only one 1.5 amps or something eventually. 
this is what's going into all three of these batteries at 55.2 volts but your BMS will actually never ever reach these 55.2 volts it will sit like this at 55.1819 and if the measurement is just a tiny bit off between your BMS and your charger it will never reach that so the battery actually never leaves the bulk or absorption voltage it never goes into float it never starts any timers it never resets to 100 percent and people send me emails and left comments and said there should be a switch in here in the bms to actually compensate for that so the bms shows a higher voltage than it actually measures but this is actually totally wrong because this is a problem of your inverter if your inverter is ignoring the data coming from the BMS, well, there's nothing the BMS can do about it. This is a problem of your inverter. So you actually need to contact the manufacturer of your inverter and ask for a firmware update. I know some inverters, they use the internal measured voltage only and they are not using the voltage of the BMS and there's always a difference which causes huge problems. But this is not a Qigong problem. This is a problem of your inverter. There we go, 55.2. We are still in bulk. 1.9, it goes down again. 20. You need to be on 55.2 for a few seconds. There you go. Absorption and the timer is running. 360 seconds we have set, six minutes. And then we go to float and actually lower the voltage. Yeah. And here with the slave BMSs, we can see that they are still sitting on 55.19 volts. Yeah, they have not reached the 55.2 to trigger their timer and then eventually reset to 100%. Let's have a look in the slave number one in the app if the timer runs. Yeah, see, this one still sits on bulk. The timer has not started because this battery has not reached 55.2 volts. It's slave number two. Yeah, and here the same for slave number two, the version 15 BMS, 55.19 volts only, and the timer has not started. So these two BMSs, they will not reset to 100%. Yeah, the moment only the timer in the master is running, and after six minutes, it will actually lower the voltage. So the slaves will never catch up then. And again, this is why it is important to have communication between your BMS and your inverter. Yeah? So the inverter knows what the voltage is in your BMS. And here in this case, we don't have communication between the adjustable power supply and the BMS, of course. Yeah? But an inverter would actually increase the voltage now slightly yeah? because it sees the BMS is only at 55.19 and not at 55.2 volts. So it would increase the voltage just slightly and help the slave BMSs to get over the hump as well and set to 55.2 volts. We may see it here now in slave number two. It jumps back between 19 and 20 all the time and it still hasn't triggered the timer yet. So it will not reset to 100% after six minutes. Let's check out um, slave number one. Now nah, the same jumps back and forward between 55.2 volts and 55.19 volt okay let's go back into the master bms yeah and this one the timer is running at 320 330 if we have a look at the remote console and go back to the jk bms into parameters we can still see 55.2 but in a few in 10 seconds this one will actually then go and show uh, 53.6 only our float voltage there we go yeah and now the master bms goes into float and lowers the overall voltage of the whole system and your slaves will never catch up never uh, we can see this here see the master has reset now to 100 percent but the slaves haven't because they haven't reached the 55.2 volts and start their timers and we've got no balancing in these two slave batteries here because the cell deviation is under 10 millivolt. They are so well balanced. Wow. While here in the master, we've got a bit of deviation, 100 millivolt, but the two amp active balancer and the JK inverter BMS is working to bring this down. And the maximum cell voltage is actually not too high. So there's no problem at all. It will balance out over time. So let's have a look at the slave one again, still on bulk timer has not even started here and in real world it wouldn't because the voltage would not be at 55.2 volts anymore it would be lower already 
And remember, we've got no load connected here, so the voltage is actually fairly stable. If you turn on loads during the time, the voltage actually goes down and then recharges. So it's actually very, very hard to reach this 55.2 volts and to start the timer. And this is exactly happening because of the voltage difference between your charger and the BMS and the lack of communication between these two. So if I just take the voltage here and set this to 55.22 volts, so, so 20 millivolt higher. And we go back into the um, uh, slave number one, which did not trigger the timer and we can see now it has immediately triggered it because we have been on 55.2 for long enough. So let's connect back to the uh, uh, master BMS. We are still in float and we have got 290 seconds gone from the 360 because we set the float timer to 0.1 hour as well just for the sake of testing. And once this is gone, the whole BMS switches back to a new charge cycle and the requested charge voltage will increase to 55.2 volts again. All right, so the BMS has now reset and went back to uh, bulk actually, but then immediately went back to absorption because we kept the voltage at 55.2 volts and it realized, hey, I'm in absorption mode again and restarted the timer again. So you can see, it requests now 55.2 volts for another six minutes and then it keeps cycling six minutes absorption, six minutes float with a lower voltage. So that works all perfectly fine. And here in the Victron system, you can actually overcome this problem by going into your settings. So this requires, of course, the communication from your BMS to the Victron system, to your servo. You go into settings, you go to DVCC, you turn on DVCC, leave all the settings off, but turn on SVS. This is the shared voltage sense. And this actually tells your charger, either your multi plus or your quattro or your MPPTs, take the voltage which comes from the BMS. Don't measure it yourself, take the voltage from the BMS and charge accordingly. So there is only one voltage in the whole system and this is the one from the BMS. And the BMS of course measures as close as possible to your battery. So there's no difference between your battery and your BMS because it's so close. Yeah, cables are very short. While your charger could be 10, 20, 30 meters away and it measures a totally different voltage. So it doesn't know what's going on in your battery. But with the communication established between your battery and the inverter, it knows. And the Victron system can overcome this problem by turning on the SVS. But if your inverter does not have this, this is a real problem then. All right, my friends, this was a long video, a ton of information. And you now also know if your BMS does not reset to 100%, what to look for, update to the latest firmware, update to the latest mobile app and also PC software. And then you can see the timer and the status of your slave BMSs as well. So you can actually see if you have hit the voltage, if the timer already runs, and then afterwards it should reset to 100%. If not, you have to tweak your system accordingly talk to the manufacturer of your inverter. They need to listen to the voltage reported by the BMS. So my friends, as always, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for, I think we are over 109,000 now. Oh yes, we are far over at 109,444 subscribers. Thank you so very much for that. Thank you for all your generous donations to the channel here, buying me a beer, a coffee, a smoothie, becoming a channel member. So thank you very much for your overall support leaving comments, sharing and liking these videos here. This all makes them possible, as you know. Guys, and until the next video, when we do something else, I don't know what we are going to do. Until then, guys, you stay charged, stay safe, and thanks again for watching. See you then. Bye-bye. Yeah, bye-bye, JK Inverter BMS version 14 and 15. Bye-bye.